Hi, my name is Stephen Cohen. I'm a physics teacher here at Vanier College, and welcome to the Physics Arcade. Uh, I'll be showing you around in a little bit. Uh, today I want to introduce you to the three core courses we teach in physics here at Vanier. Welcome to your mechanics class. So mechanics is all about forces. This here is a force gauge. I can do an applied force. I can apply a force of, let's say, 10 newtons like that on my hand. In a moment, I'm going to step on our Vanier homemade hovercraft and do a little experiment. Um, if I just sit there on the hovercraft, I can jostle all I want, but I won't go anywhere. Uh, I can't exert a force on myself. The only way for me to move anywhere is the same way any transport does anything, is to push on something else. So I need something to push me. The only way I can do that is with Newton's third law. I need to push on something, and that something will push back on me. And off I'm going to go on my hovercraft adventure around the lab. So hovercrafts are really fun, but uh, college is also about learning. So uh, here, we actually see the position and velocity variation for anything uh, with time. We have a motion sensor here that can capture us as we move. So uh, what we would normally do with a hovercraft in the lab is we'd uh, pick a lucky student who would uh, get pushed on it by a known force uh, for some time, and their motion would be tracked. Okay, so we would see that their velocity increases at a constant rate if we manage to apply a constant uh, force, thereby uh, enacting Newton's second law. And then we would see that the moment we stop pushing, um, the motion doesn't stop. It keeps going with a constant velocity. And we would see that uniform motion as a flat line on the velocity. And we would see the position grow at a constant rate. Just as an example for how this works, I'm just going to click it on and you'll see in real time how, depending how fast I move and how far I move, I can move back closer. We see, and now I can go for a jog. <laughs> there we go. So what we could do after having tracked the motion of the student on the hovercraft is if we know their mass, we can actually see from two points of view what acceleration we expected and what acceleration we got. So we could use kinematics, we could measure how far they went while they were being forced, while they were having an acceleration. Um, and we could see, compare that, if we know the time they did it in and the fact that they started from rest, we could compare that to the expected acceleration that you get through Newton's second law. We know how hard we were pushing and we know the mass of what we're pushing. So the acceleration should be that force divided by their mass because there's no friction with a hovercraft. So the hovercraft isn't just to be fancy. Our second course is Waves, Optics, and Modern Physics. Now I'm about to show you a neat phenomenon called a standing wave. So up there we have something called a harmonic oscillator. It just sort of goes back and forth at a certain frequency. That's how many times per second it goes back and forth. And it sends waves down this string that's in tension. But at the end, it reaches and then it echoes back. Like any string that you might expect is attached to a wall, it would echo back what it's sent. But if I send those waves at just the right rate, the ones that come back can add on to them, thereby causing something called constructive interference or resonance. And uh, you're going to see this standing wave that gets set up. So right now, it's going back and forth very slowly. I'm going to speed it up. And eventually, I'll get the fundamental mode, but I'm going to go to that second mode. It looks pretty cool. You might have trouble seeing it, but when I get it going at just this specific frequency, we get a point there that doesn't move. We call that a node. But some places where the amplitude adds up to be so big right there. And if I use a strobe light, you can see, even though it might look like it's in a lot of places at once, of course, it's one string. It can only be in one place at one time. So this is pretty neat. You know, if you've taken the waves course, then you know that if I tell you how long this string is, how much tension it's in, and its linear density, you could have told me, yeah, you got to do that at 16 hertz to excite this second mode, physics. And our third core physics course is electricity and magnetism. So here I have a, a magnet actually hanging right over here, and it's near two lights. You can actually light them up. But as you notice, 
hopefully you can see this. One of them is flashing when I bring the magnet near. The other one just sort of gets pulled. Maybe you can see it. Um, the difference has to do with alternating current and direct current. So when you have alternating current uh, near a magnet, you actually see some kind of wobble and uh, that's due to the magnetic force. Well, I hope you had fun, and uh, I hope you will have fun when it's actually you in the lab. Uh, if you ever cross paths with me or any of my colleagues in the physics department, don't hesitate to stop us in this physics arcade and ask uh, any questions you might have. I uh, hope to meet you soon, uh, but in the meantime, see you later.